So there's a lot of ways to structure a Google Ads account. Um, this is the same way I've been using for over 12 years, 13 years, and I think it will make sense to you too once you understand what it's about. So systematic, what does it mean? It means when you structure an account, you want to do it in a systematic way that makes sense. Let's say you sell cat food, okay, and you sell, that's going to be a campaign name, okay, and then you, the ad groups can be organic, if you sell organic, maybe cheap, maybe some other kinds of ad groups for that cat food. Now, if you also sell dog food, you want to create a campaign for dog food. Right? And then the same thing will follow suit for organic, cheap, etc. And when you have a systematic structure that works, it's easier to navigate and it's easier to evolve. Because as you discover another ad group opportunity for cat food, you can also add it to dog food and further on to your other campaigns and ad groups. And having a systematic ad group or campaign structure, it allows you to block keywords more systematically. If you want to add a keyword to the account, let's say you discover a search term for dog food, you're going to know where to find it because your structure is in a certain way. Also, it allows you to have your team help you evolve your account structure because it makes sense. Okay? So systematic account structure works. Uh, maximize potential market. So you want to cast your net as far as possible to whatever is relevant to you. If you do that, then you are covering your full market. That's where you start. And then you just have to pay for whatever the keyword is worth. Okay? Uh, the opposite of that is starting with a few ad groups or a few campaigns and hoping that those are the right ones. There's no reason to hope those are the right ones. Cast a wide net across as many things as possible. Spread your budget across. You can put your discretion on what you think is worth more. Uh, we'll get into that later. But in that sense, you can kind of see what the market says. Right? You might be surprised. So you don't have to choose five keywords or two products. Cast a wide net as wide as possible, pay for whatever it's worth, maximize your market reach, and then bid accordingly. Okay? Easy to manage. So this is kind of where I see a campaign structures that have best keywords or some weird naming convention that if you log in, you have no idea what it means. This is not made for humans, so it's not going to allow you to manage the account very effectively. Right? If you sell cat food and dog food, on your website, and you come into your account, and you see cat food, dog food, and you can see on the campaign level, that's what you see, the view is, how much money you're investing there. And as a business owner, you can say, I'm investing X dollars in dog food. Yep, it's my top spender. It's also my top seller. You can correlate to the business, and then you know it makes sense. When you start getting into things like best campaigns, or this random nomenclature, as you don't quite relate to the business as easily, it just won't happen. In theory, it could, but quite frankly, it just won't happen. Okay, and this is kind of where we get into the things I see, uh, campaigns called top keywords. What happens when your top keywords stop becoming your top keywords? This is where you see a top keyword campaign full of pause ad groups, pause campaigns, I mean pause keywords, um, and then when you have a new keyword to add, you go in there and you have no idea where it is. It becomes a mess. You have to be systematic and organized because everything else falls apart. Uh, pause keywords. It's another thing. I see people putting in uh, organic dog food, keyword, OK? Uh, dog food, and it spends so much, and it's not converting. And you're like, this keyword is terrible. Do you sell organic dog food? Well, yeah. Well, then don't bid $10 a click, right? Maybe $5 a click. That doesn't work. Try four. Try three. Try two. Try to find the right bid for what the keyword is worth. Don't fault the keyword because you didn't do your uh, work. Um, and put the right bid. Or maybe it's matching the wrong search terms. So add negative keywords. Try to figure out, if you sell organic dog food, just try to figure out how to make it work. It should work, right? And usually it does make sense. It just requires work. And that's why these automated campaigns don't work as well sometimes because people just start pausing keywords and then you're left with like five keywords out of potential hundreds that they're trying to put all your eggs in that basket. And when your competitors put all their eggs in that basket, the auction gets more expensive. And then you're competing in an expensive auction. Don't fault the keyword. There's no reason to pause the keyword. Unless you stop selling dog food, pause the campaign. But the, the keyword is rarely at fault. It just requires more work. That's the way Google works. Okay? Uh, SCAD. This is something that was around for a while. Never liked it. Single keyword ad group, if you heard of it. 
uh, they say put one keyword for every ad group. It's a mess. It's made for maybe machines, not for humans. You can't manage it. And that going back to uh, if it's not easy to manage, it won't be managed properly. So a uh, Google Ads account structure that's systematic, maximize your market potential, and easy to manage, core to the business, that's the beginning point to be a, uh, have a successful Google Ads campaign, um, an investment. All right? So rule number one, I hope this helped. Thanks.